Hey you, let's talk about Nike's only tennis shoe with a durability guarantee. If you do enjoy honest tennis equipment reviews such as this, do me a favor, hit like and smash subscribe. And also hit that bell icon to be notified when I upload brand new original tennis content such as this. Nike always has had an emphasis on marketing. Keep in mind, there is literally almost a 0% chance that Rafa Nadal actually uses this tennis shoe. Just like he definitely doesn't use the Bablot Pure Arrow as his actual tennis racket. Coming in at $150 along with a six month durability guarantee, I'm going to analyze this flagship Nike shoe as an amateur four or five tennis player. Unlike some other YouTube channels out there, I bought these at market price. And to be honest, I really don't give a shit about the technology behind it. So rest assured, this is as unbiased of a review, just like all of my other reviews on my channel. The first thing you might notice on the shoe is the lack of a tongue. When slipping these on at first, you might feel weird, but eventually you do kind of get used to it. Personally, I still prefer the traditional tongue shoe, but after a few hits, you really don't notice it too much. Right out of the box, there is a break-in period of about two hours. It wasn't anything painful like the Nike React Vapor NXT. I'll leave a link to that tennis shoe review in this corner if you guys want to check it out. But I did feel discomfort for about two or three and a half hitting sessions. Eventually, the material did settle in with my insoles, my socks, and my overall foot. As a defensive baseliner and single specialist, I was happy with how this shoe allows me to take explosive cuts at the ball without any type of hesitation. I was happy to report that I felt comfortable sliding on the hard court when needed as well. This shoe gripped enough, but also allowed me to slide when necessary. Unlike the previous Nike cages, which in my opinion was one of the best Nike shoes ever made, so Nike was really stupid for getting rid of those. This shoe felt a little bit lower towards the ground than normal, which is fine for most people. However, I wasn't that big of a fan. Normally, when a shoe is lower to the ground, there is more ankle stability, and vice versa. If the shoe is higher, there is less ankle stability, as a rule of thumb. However, the stability is there, but I did expect a lot more from the shoe, given how low of a profile this was oh, sorry, sorry. when riding your foot. Also, there is a lip in the back of the shoe where it kind of sticks out. Personally, I never had a problem with it, but I could see tennis players that aren't super coordinated with their feet clipping the back of the shoe to the ground when backpedaling for a shot like an overhead. Without a doubt, this is a very durable shoe. After about 80 hours of hitting, I am only now beginning to see a hole on the soles of these shoes. However, there are some downsides to this. About 60 hours into the shoe wear, I started to notice I was slipping on a lot of aggressive change of direction shots on multiple tennis courts, both indoors and outdoors. To the point where it was almost dangerous for me to wear this shoe on competitive singles play. Also, I think this is a horrible name for a shoe. Can you imagine Adidas naming their shoe the Adidas Water Fast Smoke Prison 4 Zverev? It's just too many words. Keep it simple, guys. Honestly, as much as I like to rip on marketing machines like Nike, I still think this is a good value shoe for the regular consumer out there. It is most definitely not perfect at all, but it does the job pretty well. I hope you guys found this to be informative. And as always, happy hitting.